Okay, uh, before uh, we start with these uh, presentations, though, uh, let's look at uh, Blackboard. Uh, and I've got some new stuff up here, okay? Uh, one thing is I've got a seating chart, okay? Starting next time, okay, I want you to sit in these particular seats, okay? And uh, I uh, sort of hesitate to do that. I don't really like to have seating charts. But uh, I can't learn your names. <laughs> And if I have you in seating, you know, it'll be easier for me to learn your names. Also, we've had a few technical problems with the computers. Uh, like in the last quiz, uh, some of them froze up. Uh, and uh, But I don't know what computer it was, you see. So, uh, starting next time, okay, when you come to class, okay, uh, please sit here. Okay, so the, there's 12 uh, uh, seats, there's 12 uh, computers in each row. So this would be the first row. Starting at that end over here, okay, that'd be row one, uh, you know, one, two, three, four through 12, then 13 through 24, okay. So please sit in that seat, okay, and I'm going to start taking roll also uh, starting next time, okay. And so when you come in, please, uh, you know, check to see that your computer is working okay. Okay. So please check that out. The next thing is uh, on assignments. Um, so uh, these presentations uh, are going to be from assignment three. So I just uh, posted assignment four. <clears throat> so in assignment four, there are two attachments there. Uh, the first attachment says salesmaninfo.accdb. A, C, uh, a file of type .accdb is an access Microsoft Access database. Okay, and so this salesman info is just an example uh, of a uh, Microsoft Access database. And I'm going to go through that example and some other examples uh, uh, to show you how one does uh, a Microsoft database. Your assignment, uh, though, is given uh, in the second document here. And so let's look at this document. Well, I, may have to, I may have to give uh, quiz three over again because of the, the sticking computers. Okay. And be prepared to take quiz three over again next time, okay? In case I decide we're going to have to do it, okay? What? Well, that's too bad. <laughs> you had to be able to do be good. Because yes. I'm sorry. I still can't hear you. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Computer Science 1300 Assignment 3. So we're going to have to make some uh, corrections here. Assignment four. <laughs> and database application, okay? Create a Microsoft Access 
are similar, yes. If we do quiz three again, what? Oh, uh, it'll be next Thursday if we do it, yeah. Uh, there may not be a need to do it, but uh, uh, there may be because we had, well, there were some problems with some of the machines, okay? And uh, there's some technical problems, okay, in uh, getting it. So the easiest thing to do is just have it over again. <laughs> Create a Microsoft Access, okay, or similar database to keep track of the use of video and computer games by a selected set of people. The database should have three object tables, a person table, a video game table, a computer game table. Okay? As we'll find out in uh, uh, databases, particularly in a re what's called relational database systems, the database, uh, the, the model of data is tables. You have tables of data. Yeah. Uh, and so the first thing that you have to do is uh, design these tables uh, and then you have to populate these tables and then once you have uh, your database ready then you can ask questions of the database. <laughs> the person table should have the following fields. We got a person ID, okay? the person's uh, uh, name, the person's age. Now age is uh, just simply going to be youth, teen, adult, or senior, okay? So not an actual um, uh, you know, number, but just youth, teen, adult, or senior. Then the game experience of the person, that is where the person is a game novice or a player or an expert, and the sex, okay? You should create this table from your, from your imagination, but there should be at least 50 people, and each category should be represented. Okay, the video games table is given below, okay, where rank is used for video game. Uh, let, let's go down and look at this uh, video game table. So, th these were the top uh, 20 video games of 2010, okay? So, um, over here uh, is um, the title of the video game. And this was this rank, okay, uh, during uh, 2010, okay? So the most popular uh, video game for 2010 was Call of Duty uh, Black Ops, okay? And uh, it, it, it worked on these platforms, the 360, okay? That's the same thing as the Xbox, okay? The PS3, the PlayStation 3, okay? The Wii and the NDS, okay? And then this is this entertainment, uh, you know, uh, service uh, ranking, okay? And it says uh, this particular uh, game, it's rating as mature, okay? This one's for everybody, okay? This one's mature, okay? So, forth. so here are those games. So, basically, uh, your video game table is going to be this right here, okay? And so the fields uh, in this table are going to be the rank, this rank is going to be the ID of the game, okay? So Call of Duty Black Ops, is, uh, is its ID is going to be one, okay? And Halo Reach, uh, its ID is going to be three, okay? And Just Dance 2, its rank is going to be seven, okay? <coughs> so forth. So you're going to have the rank, okay? Then you're going to have this name of the uh, video game. Then uh, you're going to have what platforms this particular uh, a game works on. So I think all together there's uh, uh, six different platforms listed here. And so basically we're going to have six columns, okay, uh, in, the, in the table. One for each platform. And we're going to say Y for yes, that is this game does work on that platform, and N, no, it doesn't work on that platform. So the video game table is given below where rank is used for video game ID. And there's one field for each of the platforms, 360, PS2, PS3, PSP, NDS, and Wii. This Call of Duty Black Ops would be coded YN, YN, YY. 
meaning it does work on the 360 not available for the PlayStation 2 uh, yes it is available for the PlayStation 3 no for the PSP yes and yes okay and the Halo Reach would be why in it and it's only available uh, on the Xbox 360 okay why because that's a Microsoft game right Okay, the computer game table is also given below. So, so we got three tables: a first table, okay, a video game table, and a computer game table. And let's look at the computer game table. It's down here. Mm -hmm. These are the top 20 computer games. The difference between a video game and a computer game is the computer game runs directly on a computer. Mm -hmm. So, if you have a laptop or a desktop. Uh, you can play the game there, but if it's a video game, you have to have one of these special console boxes like an Xbox or a PlayStation or a Wii or something else, okay, that, that it plays on, okay? So, uh, the uh, computer games, uh, they have a rank also, okay? They have a title. They have an ESRB rating, okay? But they don't have a, there's no platform there. I mean, the, the platform is basically uh, a, um, a, a, a you know a PS you know, personal computer. So um, there should also be a pairing table with three fields: person ID, video game, platform, and the second pairing table: person ID, computer game. These two tables show which games each people plays. Okay. So for each of the people, you have to say, this person here, person number one, plays uh, games number one uh, on, on platform 360, okay? This one plays game two on platform PlayStation, this one plays, okay, like that. Using these tables, we will make inquiries of the database, such as, what percent of the people in the database play Halo Reach, okay. Do the people in the database play more games on the 360 or the Wii? How many teens play Just Dance 2, okay. We will consider the inquiries in more depth as the assignment nears for submittal, okay. But it's going to be due uh, April the 28th, okay. Uh, now the class, the last day of class, well this class is going to be April the 26th, okay. Uh, and we're not going to have any final exam, okay? We're going to have quiz uh, uh, number four and quiz number five, okay? And uh, then uh, this. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that gives you the general idea, okay, of what this assignment is, okay? So uh, now what we need to do is kind of talk about it, okay? I'm going to work part of the assignment in class uh, and uh, but uh, uh, not right now uh, maybe toward the end of class uh, you know I can start on it but we'll worry about the first problem in a database is uh, the tables that you have to have okay so you have to create these tables uh, that means you have to decide what's going to be in the tables that's called designing the database and uh, then you have to uh, create the table, then you have to populate the table. Okay? And so we'll actually uh, go through and I'll do some of that for you. Okay, okay so there's that. There's one other thing, uh, and that is I put up a new discussion. Uh, So uh, I've, ta I've taken the other discussion down finally, okay? So this is only the second discussion topic that I have brought up, okay? How valuable is Computer Science 1300, okay? Does 1300 meet your expectations, okay? If not, what should be done? Okay? Should the Computer Science Department remove Computer Science 1300 from the catalog? Should the course be content be changed, okay? This is actually uh, an important discussion topic because uh, uh, I'm going to take uh, what you say to the undergraduate committee of our department and uh, 
uh, see, you know, uh, what the future of this course is, okay? Um, I'm not convinced that this, uh, we, what we have a, uh, here is a match for what's really needed, okay? And um, so, uh, I mean, I've, I've only taught this course uh, uh, this last year. In fact, they, they asked me to take the course over to look into uh, this, and uh, I don't think it quite meets uh, what, what's needed here. And uh, uh, I'm not real happy about uh, you know some of the results of the course. Uh, I'm not real happy about uh, this uh, material, uh, the textbook, and the, and the, uh, the quizzes. I think the quizzes are kind of dumb, frankly. <laughs> And uh, so, uh, actually, um, I'd like your opinion on this. I'm actually thinking about on quiz four and five, making up my own quizzes. Okay, uh, I think I'd probably do better, a lot better <laughs> than what they do. But it won't be uh, multiple choice. Okay, it'll be you know. And also, uh, what we're going to do uh, on the quiz four and five is uh, we need to review. <laughs> One of the problems, I think, uh, in the standard material is it never goes back and reviews anything. And, you know, students learn things, you know, it's not just students, but anybody learns things on a short-term basis. And for, the and for that short term, you can, you can say a lot of, about something, right? But if you haven't really studied it very well, it just vanishes into thin air. Okay? So I want to actually go back and visit some of the earlier topics in the course, particularly the more technical parts, okay, of the course, like hardware, okay, and software, like binary number system, okay, uh, and ASCII notation, and this sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, so uh, talk to me about this, okay, and again, uh, this is one of the um, um, discussion topics, and uh, it also counts in your classroom as well, so I really want to know uh, what you feel about the course. Okay, now, in order to um, make a presentation, you have to have your presentation on a uh, thumb drive. Everybody have that? Okay. So, uh, I'd like to, are you on the speaker? You are on the speaker? Are you on the speaker? Okay, so Greg M. So talk to us about Adobe. You don't have them. Yeah, well you can bring this up here. Do you have your adapter? Okay. Well, uh, should I do that for a short time? No, I'll come back to you again. Okay. Tracy Fellows. Yeah, from your submission, yeah. Can I go first then? Yeah. Okay, and then Tracy is right up at the front there. I'm sorry, what your name was? So, Greg Cam is going to talk to us about Adobe. Now, here, here's the rules, okay? You know, if you give a talk here, uh, you don't necessarily get uh, extra credit. Okay? If you give a good 
If it's worthy of extra credit, okay, you'll get some extra credit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not guaranteed, right? So yeah, no, no, extra credit's not guaranteed just because you, uh, Unfortunately, when you uh, submit these things, uh, the order is uh, the order that, uh, so they're not in alphabetical order. Okay, here we go. seems to be running automatically. Mm -hmm. Last time your gap saw that was in the bag on the floor, it's still in your car and you moved it into the plastic container. Is that the, is that the um, sound that's on it? Yep. It sounds like it's... Uh, Well, let me just click through. Because when I was doing, you know, going through and looking at it, it was really quick. Gap saw that was in the bag on the floor. It's on your car. Right it's just <laughs> I was doing. That's kind of funny. I think you're okay now. Okay, so this is uh, uh, Greg Camp. Okay. I, I'm i sure maybe what a fifth of you at a bus did at Adobe, so you probably, several of you are familiar with it. Um, I went a different route. I, I started out with Adobe as the, uh, the company, uh, but there are a couple of things that I thought were kind of interesting that uh, I hope none of you guys came up with. Last time you were in the bag on the floor. It's still in your car. Kind of distracted. I hear my wife's yeah. voice in the background talking to me when I was doing my presentation. Uh, the time frame. This is not stopping. Adobe founded in 1982. Um, initial public offering in 86. I just went through and we talked I talked about how, uh, how it kind of progressed and how much the revenue and how much the company was worth. Uh, with a couple of the kind of the key ones with big companies when they reach a billion dollars of annual revenue is kind of a mile marker. Um, is there a way to stop that? <laughs> Crud. Okay, well pretend like that just went for a little bit. <laughs> and I said uh, the important part, one of the uh, one of the founders was kidnapped in 1996. He was going into work and uh, these two guys were hanging out, drove up in a car and they were asking him directions and by gunpoint made him get in there. He was gone for a couple of days and they found out who the FBI was on it. And then fast forward to 2006, the same thing happens uh, to the son of the CEO, this little kid in, um, in India. He and his Alpera or his um, uh, were waiting to go to the school uh, just out 
outside of his home, I'm sure it was Palatial Mansion, um, to go, and these guys drove up and they abducted him and took him away, and three people had him and were holding him for ransom, kind of the same sort of thing, just in a different country at different time. Um, and I was looking at all of the Fortune 500 companies, and it's like the only one that has more than one in that, in that period of time, uh, as far as kidnappings or abductions. Supposed to be for effect, it was supposed to be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a big deal. Um, I think you went through my whole presentation in like two minutes. It's <laughs> <laughs> alright, don't be mad at it. Sorry about that, I felt like I was looking at it. Very interesting, yeah, I didn't know that. I thought it was kind of cool. <laughs> Okay, uh, Tracy, then. Okay, so Tracy's going to talk to us about Microsoft. Oh, I don't need my thumb drive. Hmm? I don't need this. No, no. Okay. So you just got up here. Yep. Um, okay, so my name is Tracy, and my presentation's on Microsoft. found a cool logo that I thought uh, was awesome because it was one of the first ones that came out in 1976, which you probably can't see. Um, but 1976 was the premiere year of Microsoft, and uh, actually Microsoft had its first advertisement in Digital Design Magazine. And in 1980, Microsoft introduced a new generation of products. Um, one of them in 1984 was Microsoft Software and Apple Macintosh combined, and that was a little uh, product box. In 1990, um, Office for Windows, which included uh, Excel, Word, and PowerPoint, became available. And in 1994, Bill Gates uh, found time to marry his now wife, Melinda Gates. And that was the little container that Microsoft Office came in. Um, in 2000, Microsoft uh, launched Windows 2000, and Bill Gates uh, transitioned from being a heavy role at Microsoft uh, to spending more time at his foundation that he started with his wife, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. That's a picture of him and his wife. Uh, 2010, Microsoft launches Connect for Xbox 360. I'm pretty sure a lot of us have enjoyed Dance Dance once or twice. Um, and Microsoft launches Windows Phone. Uh, Microsoft has eight divisions. Um, online services, server and tools business, Microsoft Business Solutions, Microsoft Office Division, Interactive Entertainment Business, Windows Phone, Windows and Live, Windows and Windows Live, and Skype. Um, the co-founders of Microsoft, Paul Allen. Um, just some recent information, he was actually a victim of identity theft, which according to this web, um, this article, 
he, uh, it says it's a little ironic that an AWOL soldier could go about stealing the identity of the man who helped start a company that itself was a pioneer in digital security. And this is Bill Gates. And recent news for him is in March 2012, uh, Gates attended the Wall Street Journal's annual economics conference to discuss the fight against global warming. Recent photos of the two. Um, inspiration for a creative environment, Microsoft actually offers an art collection, uh, which is just to inspire innovative development of creativity. It includes paintings, sculptures, photographs, and various other works that reflect Microsoft's diverse and worldwide community of employees and con customers. And you can find their Facebook page, at, uh, obviously, facebook.com slash Microsoft Art Collection. That's it. It was a mic shot. <laughs> I actually, I couldn't find, like, I kept finding various stories about it, so I didn't, I didn't forget I was a favorite one, but I found the photo entertaining. Probably library fine. I'm not here. I wouldn't have produced anybody. Okay. We can be We can do it this way better. You see your name. I'm gonna. Yeah, you see it, just tell me here. There it is, right there. presentation on uh, Lenovo products uh, basically I did a simple presentation because I really didn't require a timeline for this since I was only describing two products that uh, I wrote a, the first assignment on so this is the first uh, well just a little back history about the company itself just one slide uh, it was founded by 11 uh, engineers basically computer engineers uh, located in China I mentioned more in my essay but uh, they were located in China uh, their first uh, intention was basically to distribute and uh, service imported PCs to repair and service basically uh, if something was wrong they sent it out to China for them to repair. Their initial investment was uh, 25,000 as you guys see. Uh, they contributed equally, all, all 11 of them contributed equally into this and uh, today Lenovo is uh, the fourth largest manufacturer of computers in the world. <coughs> this is the first product that I'd like to take into account. Uh, it was released, uh, it's the IBM Portable PC 5155. Uh, the basic, uh, let me just give you a little backstory that uh, I think what happened, maybe it's a, a sort of a merger between Lenovo and uh, IBM. IBM kind of, kind of basically released these, uh, uh, these portable PCs uh, with Lenovo. As, as you know, my, my, uh, my presentation is on Lenovo itself and not IBM. But this was released in 1984, 
and uh, it was one of the its first time portable PCs. Uh, it was the successor to PC 5100. It will uh, it weighed a staggering staggering 30 pounds. 30 pounds. You can you can just imagine carrying that thing around, and it's considered a portable PC. Today, I've seen like the heaviest laptops are maybe 10 pounds, and uh, nobody will actually carry that today. 30 pounds. Everybody will probably laugh at you if you. Uh, if they see you carry a 30 pound PC around. Uh, the price was also pretty shocking, uh, 4,200 uh, bucks approximately. And uh, it came with a RAM of 256 kilobytes, which was also extended if you paid a couple hundred dollars extra to 512. Uh, as you know, today the computers are up to, uh, with RAM, four gigs is easily like the low, low end. And uh, we can see how much we've progressed since that time and uh, the processor is only a uh, only a uh, 4.77 megahertz and as you guys know today computers are well above 2 gigahertz uh, processors so this was the first uh, well not first but uh, one of the first of its kind uh, here's a picture of it and uh, I saw another picture of this same computer it was actually uh, the keyboard itself is supposed to go into the screen area I guess and uh, you can basically carry it. It also had a carrying handle, so you can carry it around wherever you want it. Uh, it's one of those things I can't recall, but uh, it just popped into my mind right now. You guys seen the movie uh, Pursuit of Happiness? That uh, Will Smith used to carry that thing around. That's how it looked in, in the other picture, but I, I didn't put that picture up. Uh, and this is the next product, uh, the ThinkPad uh, X60. It was released, the ThinkPad itself uh, was released from 1992 to 2005. That's uh, the year the different models of ThinkPads released. But uh, the ThinkPad X60, I believe, was released uh, somewhere after 2000. <coughs> as, I, uh, as I said, uh, 15 different types of ThinkPads that came out. And uh, this was known for its extremely uh, portable design. One of its first, uh, one of basically the first of it uh, for, for its kind, uh, the portability. But uh, just a second. Oh yeah, this uh, this also product had a, the introduction to the dual processor. Uh, normally, before this time, uh, a lot of computers had single cores, and uh, this computer featured a dual processor. Uh, that meaning two processors in one computer. It was known for its excellent keyboard and the in introduction of uh, the finger reading, fingerprint reader. So, uh, as you know, uh, today al almost a lot of computers have that uh, for you to access your email or whatever you need to access. Uh, also, the long-lasting battery, but but the downside uh, was uh, its exp uh, how much it cost. Basically, uh, it was very expensive, even for that time, and uh, lacked a portable, uh, I mean, built-in optical drive and a built-in support for Express Card uh, optical drive. I guess the <laughs> optical drive itself and the support cards. I guess the memory cards and stuff and the SD cards. That's what I'm take a guess. And here's a picture of uh, the IBM you might have seen. Uh, my uncle owned one, uh, owned one back in like 2002, 2003. So here's one picture, and I believe that's it for me. Thank you. And uh, the uh, 20 points is uh,
So uh, if there were no extra credit, uh, then uh, uh, the way I do the grades is uh, the maximum grade would be a thousand. And then if you're in the 900s, if you're basically between 1,000 and 900, uh, I would expect that to be an A. Now actually, um, what I do is, um, usually nobody gets 1,000, okay? And so, um, Basically, I think of these as being A's, and you know, down the bottom is A minuses, okay. And in the uh, down here, uh, in the 800s, okay, are the B's, okay. And then here, uh, you know, in the 700s are the C's, okay. <laughs> D's. Okay? We don't talk about anything more than that, right? And um, so um, then, uh, but let's say the highest grade in the class was 925, okay? Uh, then basically I have to take all of these grades here, okay, and I have to scale them down. That is, I had to take each one of these boundary points, okay, and I had to multiply them by, you know, uh, 925 over 1,000, okay? It changes them, okay? This is, uh, this is curving the grade, okay? And then, uh, but um, this number right here has to include uh, any extra, so like I've given these people 20 extra points, okay? And 10 extra points, okay? So it is possible that if someone could get, uh, as of right now, a thousand points, okay? And they could get this extra 20 uh, points, okay? So. It's possible for the highest rate to be 1020, okay? If that, if that happens, then I basically I had to multiply these things by 1020 over 1,000, okay? Move them up a little bit, okay? That's the way that works, okay? Okay, so uh, Grace uh, Agbula. Grace is going to talk to us about Oracle. Okay. Hi, my name is Grace. Um, I go by Tinu though, but it doesn't matter. Oh. Um, hi, my name is Grace. I go by Tina, but it doesn't matter. Um, I did my paper and my presentation on Oracle, and I chose to focus on the CEO, Larry Ellison, because I didn't know that. I decided to focus on Larry Ellison, the CEO of Oracle, because I found the company kind of boring. Um, I termed him Oracle's Larry. Um, from this chart, you're going to see basically the growth of Oracle from the beginning, from 1980 to 1986. Even though in 1980 um, the company had less than a million, it basically doubled every seven years till 1986. And this growth basically shows the basic trend in those years. So Oracle became a success in a short period of time. Um, these are the co-founders of Oracle. Even though Larry Ellison is the CEO right now, there are actually three. <laughs> The first one was Ed Oates. The second one is Larry Ellison, and the third one is Bob Miner. Um, Oates was the first person to find the paper that gave the three founders the idea for Oracle success. Um, it was just about a relational database. 
And then Bob Miner was the second person who got in the group. Um, he was the original manager of Oracle, and he was actually the primary engineer of the company before Ellison took over in his early years. Um, he actually died early of cancer. But um, just to let you know, um, as like him and Ellison are really contrast, um, have a big contrast because when Miner was in charge, everyone loved him. He, he believed in really working his colleagues, but at the same time, he believed in family. And Ellison has always been ruthless. He has a big ego and everyone doesn't like him. But he is a genius anyway. Ellison was one of was the one that saw the potential in having the structured query language SQU and building a, an efficient database system. He's really the marketer and the one that propelled Oracle to what it is today. Um, so what is Ellison's drive for success? Bill Gates. Um, basically, um, Larry Ellison, I think right now is maybe fifth richest in the world and maybe like third in the IT world after Bill Gates. And he has one of the big, like there's a joke around in like Silicon Valley basically that um, the difference between God and Larry Ellison is just that God doesn't think he's, at li God doesn't think he's Larry Ellison. Like Ellison is always talking about how he's gonna overthrow Bill Gates at some time or he's gonna be the number one richest man in the world and to this day he's never been able and he just hates Bill Gates. Because um, actually Microsoft came out a day, the IPO, the initial public offering came out a day after Oracle and they beat like Oracle's company. So he's always trying to one up him, but he's never really done it. And so I just kind of talked about that. Um, he came a day after him. But I mean, this competition to beat him has really just increased Oracle's, um, Ellison's innovation. This right here, I'm sure no one knows what it is, but it's called a network computer. This is a network computer. Um, this is an idea that Ellison came up with in 1995. Ellison's product was seen as a threat to Microsoft. Honestly, Ellison, he's not really shy about things. He really came up with this computer because he wanted to do away with Microsoft. As sure, I'm sure some of you remember Microsoft 1995 when we were little. Um, that was like the early Microsoft. And basically he thought that no one would really want such a big program and such a big software that so many people don't really know how to use computers. So they should just stick to mini computers and just do basic functions. Um, it was a cheaper version of a computer and it was for everyday consumers who weren't professionals. Um, sadly, it wasn't a success. So that really was a big blow to his ego. Um, but ironically, a little more than a decade later, the first iPad came out. As it, you can see, basically, this is like the original iPad, like iPad type thing. But I guess he was just too early. He came out too early. And you can see the difference. It's really basically like, it's not exactly, but it's similar, the idea and everything. Um, I basically concluded that Ellison's drive has led to his success and where he is today. Um, he's been criticized over the years, he's, but he's, and he's very unashamed for his grief for success. Um, even worse than his open desire to see all of his competitors fail on his way up. Um, Ellison really just desires for, all, like he wants to be successful, but he wants to make sure everyone fails. It's not like I want to be better, I want everyone to fail. Um, but I mean, all of this kind of makes Larry Ellison who he is, and that's why he's Oracle's Larry. Yeah, and that's my, my name, intro, and my title. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I can't give you too much extra credit, but that was... It's been dear to you. <laughs> so you did learn, you know, somehow to project your voice in your uh, giving presentation. Uh, you, you can't talk as fast as a normal conversation. And uh, you have to project. Yeah. And uh, so you do, those are the things you need to work on before presentation. So who's uh, better looking, Bill Gates or Larry Ellison? Yes. <laughs> yes. So handsome man, right? <laughs> and at one time he was consistent in Bill Gates. Actually, there's a very good uh, movie that I have a copy of, and uh, 
Maybe I'll just show that movie in class here before the end of the semester. It's called Pirates of Silicon Valley. Has anyone seen that movie? It's uh, really very informative and, and it's pretty much true. And uh, so uh, maybe maybe we'll just, you know, it's longer I think than class. Maybe, but uh, uh, I think it's a very good movie. Okay, Julius, Emil Lug. Julius also going to talk to us about Lavorno. It doesn't. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm talking about Lenovo. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, it was founded in 1984 by 11 researchers from the Computing Institute <coughs> under the Chinese. It's going by itself, sorry. Um, in 1988, it, was, it finally became a, an entity when it was incorporated in Hong Kong. In 1993, it made its hallmark by um, producing the product, the ThinkPad, which was used in the space shuttle endeavor to repair a telescope. And in 2004, it um, became, it changed from legend to Lenovo when it was um, incorporated by, I, when it took IMB, uh, IBM, sorry. So the world's largest PC makers, Dell is the first one, I mean the third one and then Lenovo overtook it. And that, then like it's trying to overtake, um, it's trying to overtake HP and very soon it will because the, the profits from last year are actually better than, and they're, and they're increasing. So very soon by in, the, in two years time, it'll be, um, bigger than HP. So the phone, it was produced in 2010 and it was released in the Chinese markets. It actually cannot be found in the US because it's not made for American, the American uh, network. But it comes with a dock, it, it comes with um, the, I the iOS from app from Google, Android, and it's called the O-Phone. It has a special customized Android OS operating system. It comes with the dock keyboard, so you can take it out of the keyboard and you can put it back in if, if you wanted. But ThinkPad is its major, 
its, its major product, the ThinkPad, was originally manufactured and distributed by IBM before it, it took its PC division. The ThinkPad was, like the, the design was by um, a guy named Richard Sapper and it was designed after a Japanese lunchbox called the Sento. It's actually in the design was really cool because it featured in New York Museum because of its elegant design. They're very durable and of very high quality and performance. And and also it is the ThinkPad is the only laptop that is certified to be used in NASA because it made it made its modifications in order to fits like gravity and like it has velcro tape and stuff like that so it's very durable in space so that is my presentation I'm just pulling it out to look at my actual paper. Well, you can show it on that if you want. No, I'll show it on that because I'm using this to look at my paper. But you want to show it on this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Your last name is H.E., is that right? Yes, sir. Good. So uh, we're going to hear about Dale now. Michael Dale. I did my present my PowerPoint on Michael Dell. Let's see. He was born in nineteen sixty-five and he's Jewish. He has one brother he has one old I think like a uh, older brother and his mom's a uh, stockbroker and his dad's a doctor. Well that's his brother and his wife that was that's next to him. And then from that, like the time frame, when he was age seven, he started doing like just part times at home and stuff. And he started buying metals and like investing in stock. Like he was very, very interested in like business and stuff like that. And at the age of four, eight, his family told him to go and try to take the high school equivalency exam to get passes because he was really smart. And then at the eight, like when he was like 12, he worked at the Chinese restaurant doing, di uh, washing dishes. And he saved up his money to buy his first computer, which is the Apple II. Then he took it apart to see how it was like made and stuff. <coughs> and, oh, and then and when he was in high school, he actually, the newspaper subscriptions 
and he and one summer he made more than his teacher yearly pro like yearly uh, annually income and then he got accepted to UT and his family wanted him to be in pre -med, in pre med but that wasn't what he wanted to be so so in like during his free time he just fixed people's computer and buy parts to build his own computer and sell it to people and teach people that doesn't know how to use computer to use it and he started his own company by 1984 the PC limited with his friends to help people around the school and other people that's like around the area and then by 18, 1988, he finally switched PC Limited to Dell Inc. And he pretty much the oh he uh, huh. oh and um, 1986 he broke the fastest record on computer industry industry with a 12 megahertz personal computers and he created Dell and it Dell became very successful and he became one of the youngest CEO in the world uh. and by 1996 he started doing online business to help people around the world like custom like his dream is to have better customer service and help people online that people like it's away from Austin and Dell was the first one to create the first server in the world and then later on he started expanding his business to worldwide around the world like having buildings and stuff everywhere and then he retired from CEO in 2004 but he kept as a chairman there then the stock went down and all the other stuff went bad so he had to come back by 2006 to try and help Dell out but now Dell's going down so that's it
What? Yes. Mm -hmm, I did. Out of the 20? Well, I could give you 30. I didn't give you anybody 30, though. Okay. No, no, I'm saying out of the 20, give me 5,000. Well, you know, you don't necessarily get any points extra. Okay. Oh, wait. So 5 is the highest? No. The lowest is 0. And then the highest is 30. Mm -hmm. But I didn't give anybody 30. No. Is it that I wasn't loud? Like, I don't understand. Well, it just was my opinion, okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Can we, can we still do the presentation? Yes, we'll have more presentations on Thursday. Right? Do we have to sign up? Do I just no, no, right? we'll do it on Thursday. Okay. Oh yeah, and the attendance, how are you going to grade it? I guess the three <coughs> question you ask and then the discussion online? Is it going to be... Uh, well, that's... Uh, the 100 point divided by five? Uh, well, it's going to be divided by however many uh, entries there are. I don't know... And so far right now, we're on our second one. Yeah, but it's uh, the questions that I ask in class are part of it. Oh, I thought that was only three. No. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, uh, also, uh, I may give some, you know, little, uh, uh, questions, uh, online questions, okay, like a little pop quiz or something. I haven't done any of that, but it just depends on how many in you know, things there are, okay, in class participation. Well, I was wondering how many points I get this month on my uh, presentation. Uh, I give you five points. Okay. 